Hi guys! In this video, I will be drawing Bruni, the fire salamander from Frozen 2. I recently watched a movie and this little guy was so adorable and he had such a beautiful colors, so I decided to draw him. Here you can see the reference I am using to draw him. As you can see, I filmed the progress in the time lapse, so you don't have to watch me work for hours. But now you can see like 10 hours of work in only a few minutes. Even though it's sped up, I do want to talk you through the steps I went through to draw Bruni. It probably won't surprise you, but I started off by sketching him onto the paper I was going to use. And I will tell you more about my supplies later on. Then, after I sketched him, it was time to start coloring. I always like to start off with the eyes, because if you ruin the eyes, it's going to ruin the entire piece, and I prefer to know that at the start of the drawing. In the beginning, I was still experimenting a bit with the colors, because Bruni is obviously very cute, but his colors were not the easiest to draw. So you can see me switching colors and adding multiple layers before I'm happy with the overall tone. The supplies I used for this drawing are color pencils by Faber-Castell and Caran d'Ache. The paper I am using is Tone 10 paper by Strathmore. I mainly use the Faber-Castell pencils to put down the right colors and then layer the Caran d'Ache on top of that to blend everything together. The Faber-Castell pencils are quite hard to blend with, so if you want me to make a tutorial about blending with Faber-Castell pe pencils, let me know in the comments below and I can show you in detail. Let's go back to the drawing. I'm now working on the head and I'm still figuring out what colors to use to get his cute blue tone. A tip for drawing animation eyes is to pay attention to the white of the eye. It might seem completely white, but to make the eyes look more round, it's better to create some light grey shading near the edges of the eyelids. Naturally, there will be a shadow here, because of the lashes and the eyelids. Of course, Bruni doesn't actually have any lashes, because they would kind of burn off and everything, but you get what I mean. Besides the eyes, there are more places where there would naturally be shadows. In this drawing, the darkest shadows are on his legs and under his belly. Paying attention to the placing of the highlights and shadows will really make your drawing look more three-dimensional. Also, I always encourage other people to not be afraid to go too dark on the shadows. Of course you have to blend everything together carefully, but if you do so, the darker shadows will create more contrast and will give your drawing more definition. Something to pay attention to though is to not just use a black pencil to make the shadows. In this drawing you can see I'm using a different dark, a different variety of dark blue tones. Because the underside of his belly is a different type of blue than the darker areas of his legs, I'm using, using different shades of blue to get the shadows in. You might think this is a lot of work, but in the end these are the small differences that make your drawing stand out. In the reference photo, Bruni has a lot of white highlights reflecting on his scales. I tried to put these into my drawing as well by pressing down really hard on top of the blue layer with a white color pencil. In some places I wanted to make the reflection even stronger and make it stand out more, so therefore I used a white jelly roll pen. I always find the white pen really useful to create a brighter highlight than you would ever be able to get with the pencils. You can also use white gouache and a small brush instead to make the same kind of highlights. Now that Bruni is almost finished, it was time to think about a background to complete this drawing. I asked for your opinion on my Instagram page and a lot of people recommended adding a red or purple background to contrast the bright blue. To most of my Disney drawings I've added a circular background with some blended colors and a lot of sparkles. 
And I feel like this kind of became my thing, like my signature in drawings. So because of that and because a square or a triangle would be too shocking, I just chose to save the to choose the save option and I just made a circular background again. I chose to make a gradient from a reddish tone towards a blue. To add the sparkles in the background, I dilated the gouache paint and I then tapped the brush to create the splashes. Make sure you cover any parts of the drawing that you don't want covered in like a million tiny dots or any valuable items within a meter reach. Also check your face before you leave the house because the paint really can't be controlled and it will splatter everywhere. I used a sharp pencil to clean up any areas so I can paint on them where I didn't want it. And that finishes up this drawing. It was so much fun to make this little guy and I hope you enjoyed watching this as well. Bye guys!